If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause the video and try to answer the problem on your own before listening on. We've gone ahead and drawn an equilateral triangle, and at each vertex of that triangle, we have placed a positive charge Q. We've labeled them Q1 through Q3, just so that we can later keep track of the three different electric fields. In addition, we have the side lengths labeled D. Now, the question wants us to find the magnitude of the electric field produced by all three of these particles at the midpoint of any side. Now, because it says the midpoint of any side, we can arbitrarily select any one of the three midpoints of this triangle. So what we'll do is select the midpoint on the far side here. We're just gonna label that right there. And in order to determine electric field directions, what we do is use a positive test charge. So imagine placing a positive charge at this midpoint and then ask yourself, well, what direction would Q1 push that positive test charge? Would it pull, you know, push it away from the Q1? Would it pull it towards Q1? Well, remember, Q1 is also positive. So if Q1 is positive and the test charge is positive, then they're going to repel one another. So Q1 would actually repel this test charge and push it away from Q1. And this would be the direction of the electric field produced by Q1. So we would label that E1. You ask, your same, you ask the same question regarding Q2. Q2 is positive. It would also repel this positive test charge. So it's going to push that positive test charge in this direction. We would label that electric field E2. And then finally, Q3 being positive would push the positive test charge in this direction. And we would label that electric field E3. Now, there's something interesting about E2 and E3. They are produced by charges of equal magnitude. Remember, Q2 and Q3 have the same magnitude, and they're also the same distance to this midpoint. That distance right there is D divided by 2, and this distance here is also D divided by 2. So the charges are the same for Q2 and Q3. The distances are also the same. Therefore, the magnitude of E2 and E3 are also going to be the same, and therefore, they're going to cancel each other out because E2 is going to the left, E3 is going to the right. They would vectorially cancel each other out. So we're just going to get rid of them. And that means that the only electric field we have to consider is the electric field E1. So that becomes our task right now is to calculate E1, and that'll give us the overall electric field at that midpoint. Now, the electric field produced by any point charge is going to equal 1 over 4 pi times this physical constant epsilon naught multiplied by the magnitude of the given charge and then divided by the distance squared. Now, when we say distance, we're going to mean the distance from Q1 all the way to that midpoint. So that distance right there is what we're going to need. We're going to call that R. And we're going to end up looking for that. And in fact, we could do that now because if you look carefully, we have formed a nice right triangle right here. We can use the Pythagorean theorem because it's a right triangle to find that distance R. So why don't we do that next? We can come over on the side. Here's the right angle. Notice D is across from the right angle, so that's the hypotenuse. We would say that D squared is equal to D divided by 2 squared plus the other side squared, which happens to be R. So that would be plus R squared. Now that's kind of neat, actually, that we have R squared in the equation because our electric field also has R squared in it. So actually, let's just solve for R squared. That's going to make our lives a little bit easier. So what we'll do next is we'll square the D divided by 2. That gives us D squared over 4. And then you would subtract the d squared over 4 from both sides. On the left side, you're going to end up doing 1 d squared minus 1 fourth d squared. So that's going to give you 3 fourths d squared. And then that would equal the r squared on the other side. So now that we have that r squared, we can substitute in. We're going to take this expression and we're going to fill it in for that r squared right there. And then in the numerator, we have the absolute value of the charge. Well, that was the absolute value of Q1. But remember, Q1 was actually just denoted by the question as capital Q. So we're going to fill in capital Q. We don't need the absolute value anymore because we're just looking for the magnitude of the charge. And that's pretty much the answer. We can simplify it just a little bit. If we multiply the bottom here by 4 and then also multiply the numerator by 4, in the denominator, the 4 here and the 4 there would cancel out. So we can rewrite it as follows. And there we have it. That would be the correct answer. Perfectly acceptable. Some of you in the video here might notice that that term could also be rewritten as k. A lot of textbooks prefer to use k there. So you could do that as well. You could just call this k times the 4q over 3d squared. And I suppose if you did that, you can even write it as 4k times q over 3d squared. So there's a few different variations of the answer. Any one of these three variations would be acceptable.